The historic city of Valletta is a place we visited a few times whilst cruising in the Mediterranean, and we've always said, well, we must go back there someday and have a proper explore. So that's exactly what we're doing on a Jet 2 weekend city break that we booked through Hayes Travel in Bridport. And we set out from Birmingham bright and early and eager to return to this wonderful city packed with history, culture and tasty food. Our three hour flight was painless and we soon found ourselves back in the warm Malta sunshine. Our transfer to our hotel was included and with an hour of landing we were checking into the Bayview ST Hotel. However, our room wasn't ready so we used the funky luggage deposit lockers and decided to explore our surroundings. The Bayview Hotel is on the border between Zira and Sliema and overlooks the magnificent Marsmset Harbour area with its yachts and speedboats. This waterfront area is a delight to explore with bars and shops and restaurants all trying to lure you in and fill you with food and drink. It would be very easy not to explore anywhere but this waterfront but that's not what we came for so we kept walking into the Salima town area. The 30 degree heat however did mean we needed to condition our bodies for these hours of exploration. Gelato time! It's great to be back here in Valletta. We were here about six weeks ago and we're back here with something different. We're in Salima now. We're going to stay here for a few days. We're going to start our holiday with a gelato of course because a gelato a day keeps the doctor away. Oh, I've missed this. Mm. Mm. Delicious. Well, I've gone for dragon fruit. I've never tried this before, so we'll see what it tastes like. It Life looked quite tasty. nice. Right, let's try. Mmm! It's a real sort of like, like a berry sort of type taste. Really refreshing. I definitely recommend this one. This spot in St Anne's Square was a delight sheltered and bustling with tourists soaking up their surroundings. Then some exploring around Sliema and we discovered the waterfront area with its incredible stone bath. Described as Sliema's Roman baths, these stone cut chambers with inlets for the sea have a questionable Roman heritage but were widely used in Victorian times. They are quite a thing and are used by locals for a relatively safe dip in the warm Mediterranean waters. Mmm, this looked fun and we agreed that at some point on this trip we would take a bath. Hang on, we didn't bring the rubber ducks on this trip as it wasn't a cruise. We'll have to improvise, I suppose. High above the stone ledge that passes for a beach are a range of beachfront bars. And remembering how much we love the local cis beer, we found a seat, paused for a bit of refreshment, and hatched a plan on how to fill the rest of the day. Here we are. We're Hiya. back. We're back in Malta. I uh, love this place so much. Um, so we thought we'd come here and have a long weekend here. And we've got a hotel in Salima. And we've not been to Salima before, we've been told it's really, really nice. So, first put a call, we thought we'd have a walk into town. And um, we've had a gelato. We have. We've had a beer. <laughs> and we've seen some of the Raymond baths. And we're thinking, wouldn't it be nice to go for a dip? Oh, yeah, I definitely want to do that. But we're waiting, we've um, put our bags in, um, but our room's not ready yet. So, we're going for a little trundle on. Yeah. Um, and then going back, aren't we? Yes, yeah, so we're at the Bayview Hotel, which is kind of halfway between Salima and Valletta. Yeah. Um, but the room's not ready till two. So, two o'clock, yeah. You know, we thought we'd just come into town. Unfortunately, we've got to try and stay sober before we can go and check into our room. I think that could be a bit of a challenge. Well, I've had that one beer and I hadn't had any lunch, so it's sort of gone to my head a little. <laughs> well, we've been up since half past one this morning, so it was a very yeah. early flight. <laughs> anyway, so we've got four days here, or three and a bit days, and then we're going to have some real exciting adventures here in Malta. We're going to do Malta properly, hopefully. So, stay tuned. So we walked a bit further along the waterfront before heading back to the hotel. We noticed the waterfront at Salima was filled with vendors offering cruises to Gozo, tours around the Valletta harbours, and also a ferry that takes you from Salima directly to Valletta. Okay, we've had a really good walk around Salima or Salima, and it's a fantastic place. Really, really, really good. Loads of bars to cafes. We're down here by the Salima Valletta ferry. These run every half an hour. It costs two euros each way or a three pound, three euro eighty return, and it's just there. So not far from our hotel either. So we might try and do that later on in the weekend. Back at the hotel, we were able to check into our room. We had a room with a balcony, but it had an inland view. Not especially picturesque, but functional enough. Hello. Right, and we've um, come back to the hotel and we've freshened up, which was well needed because we were absolutely sh shattered, weren't we? Yep. Um, so we are actually starting to feel a bit shattered, but we're only here for four days, so we're going to um, go and paint the town red, aren't we? 
Well, I'm not sure I'm painting it red, but yeah, definitely needed the three S's. And then we're going to go in into Valletta now. Um, we need a bit of bite to eat, don't we? We do. We're starving, actually. Absolutely we starving. haven't had a lot to eat today, have we? We got up at half past one in the morning to make our way to Birmingham Airport. And we, you know, yeah. We're still doing all right. Need a second wind, though. Go in there, yeah. And probably do. a few more beers, to be fair. <laughs> I think that's a me to sleep, to be fair. OK. <laughs> all right, we're looking forward to a night in Valletta. We love it. It's a really great place. So, it um, is. Right, see you soon. See you, bye. So we then headed out on the street in front of the hotel where there was a bus stop immediately the other side of the road. We heard a say the bus is busy. It's very full, yeah. <laughs> uh, right outside the hotel, what calls that? Very handy. And 20 minutes later, we had arrived in Valletta. So that was an experience, wasn't it? Right, so we've used the, the bus and it was a bit chock-a-block. Um, but for, uh, I'm feeling very old, actually, because a nice young man got up and let me have his seat. <laughs> so it does make me feel a bit old. But, yeah, that was really nice of him. And um, it was really nice. Saw, saw a bit of um, a Malta, which was lovely. We met some lovely people on the bus and had a lovely chat with them. Um, we're now off at the Triton Fountain. Yeah, look, the Triton Fountain's right behind us. It's a really nice fountain. We used the Talinia card we bought at the airport. They're 21 euros for unlimited four days of travel. Um, I'll tell you this, you just tap it as you get on the bus and off you go. Lovely and easy, isn't nice it? Nice and easy. Yeah. And pretty reasonable as well. So we've got four days of unlimited travel. For... You've got an app as well, don't you? Yeah, you there's an app on the phone. There's an app on the phone. You mm. just tell it where you want to go to and it actually tells you what bus to get on, where to walk to and what yeah. time. Like, it's Lovely really and cool. easy, isn't it? It's really good. Mm. Anyway, so we're going to go and explore Valletta now and um, try and get a bite to eat. We're going to find that street I'm food starving. market. Yeah. Oh yeah, the street food market, definitely. Okay. We felt the Talinia Explorer card was great value for money. And for comparison, the hop-on, hop-off bus cost £31.75 per person for a one-day ticket and has a restricted set of routes. And the Talinia app is brilliant for helping you select the quickest route to your destination. Central Valletta bus station is right by the ever so impressive Triton Fountain outside the main city gate. And from here, it was easy to wander into Valletta's maze of narrow streets. We've loved this place on previous visits and isn't it amazing that we still need even more souvenirs? Then Rumbling Bellies drove us into Valletta's awesome street food court. What a selection of foods from around the world there were, and Maltese foods of course. Hmm, what to have? Well, we're spoiled for choice. There's so much to choose from in here. Um, what am I going to go for? I don't know, I'll let you know later. We circled round and around, trying to decide what to have. I've gone for the lemon chicken, and uh, so just waiting for it to come. We've been given one of these little things, so we wait until it beeps and then we'll go and collect it. Um, we're just going to go and have one of these nice um, lemonades and um, just wait for it. I'm so excited! Yay! And the food finally arrived. Okay, here we are. Big reveal time. It's foodie review. It we've gone is. for the Chinese tonight, so we go have. for it, Nelly. What have we got? Right, well, we've got lemon chicken and we've got noodles. So I'm going to just try the noodles first. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Looks good. Really tasty. Full of flavour. I think the noodles have been cooked in some sort of broth. Okay. So really nice. The now, the lemon chicken. Oh, wow. That was amazing. Really, it's crispy. And it's got a really nice, sweet, lemony flavour. Really nice. It said on the menu, I had like honey and sesame seed mm. and lemon. Delicious. And we're finishing it off with a homemade oh. lemonade. Oh, that's my favourite. And it's got mint on the top. Let's try that. That is so refreshing and it's really minty as well. Cool. It's a brilliant. Out of five? Five out of five. All right, good review. Amazing. Again. Clean plates all around. Well done, Nettie. Great choice. The letter was coming to life and the party atmosphere was developing in the city streets. The bars and cafes make great use of the steps and alleyways. It's insta-perfect and the only difficulty is trying not to accidentally photobomb somebody's Instagram pose. When we've cruised from Valletta previously, the dockside bars and cafes look so inviting, but so far we've never visited them. Time to change that then. Down on the quayside, bumped into an old friend. There she is, the Azura. So we've sailed from here a few times, and every time we've been here and sailed away, there's always been some lovely bars and restaurants on the quayside here. We've always said, you know, we must do that. So we're going to try and find a bar, 
and try and find a nice glass of wine and just soak up the atmosphere. Maybe the ship will sail away. It looks amazing at night time, all the lights down here, it looks gorgeous. So um, yeah, hopefully we'll find somewhere nice. And sometimes we've seen dancers, haven't we, on the side? Yeah, some traditional Maltese dancing. Mm. That maybe so, they'll make a show tonight. Fingers crossed. Okay. Tron Maltese Wines was on our to-do list for this holiday, and we found a nice dockside bar with a friendly waiter to tick this one off the list. Wine review time. Right side, what do you think of this local wine? Well, we wanted to try the local Maltese wine. We've gone for a Palatino Sauvignon Blanc, which is uh, you know, um, locally made. Uh, tasting notes are that it's uh, generous notes of exotic fruits and lychees, it says. Well, I can honestly say it, it's quite a fruity number. I would say it's quite, it's not sweet. It's more medium than sweet, I would say. It's definitely not dry. It's very smooth uh, and very kind of uh, easy on the palate. It's quite a drinkable wine. I don't think that bottle's gonna last very long at all. And it was very reasonably priced, so. What would you give it out of five? Oh, good four and a half, I think. Right. A really good drinkable wine. That's very good. Thumbs up. Right, cheers. This moment sped past, and as the light failed, Piano Azura came to life. And it was lovely just to sit on the dock and listen to the sounds of the ship, knowing that those aboard were setting off on a brilliant adventure. And the wine had been good. Very, very good, actually. But we wanted to soak up more of Valletta's light knife. And Nettie wanted to photograph as many animals on the Valletta streets as she could find. And we took the Baraka lift up into the city. This costs one euro and speeds you up into the city without climbing all those steps, which, let's be honest, would have accelerated our enjoyment of all the wine we'd just drunk. The upper Baraka gardens are beautiful day and night, and we took a moment to savour the gorgeous nighttime views across the harbour. And as we wandered down past Jean de Valette Square, we heard music. Not dance music, but an orchestra. This was a rehearsal for a music from the movie show that plays at the Open Air City Opera House and those sat at the surrounding bars and restaurants were enjoying the tunes. With alcohol well and truly in our systems and loving the city buzz, we decided to join in the party and find a cocktail bar. It's cocktail review time. We found a nice little cocktail bar called Gin's Cow in the back streets in Valletta and we've ordered a couple of cocktails. So what have you gone for? Um, I think it's um, a sort of a take on a margarita. All right, because um, it's a tequila thing or something, isn't it? I think so, yeah. And he was basically saying that it's got um, some... Um, um, frozen avocado or something? Yeah, I think it was frozen avocado or frozen avocado stone or something instead of ice. Looks interesting. Okay, taste. I'll find Off out. you go. Right. First time tasting. Oh. That's nice. Right. It's got like a smoky, the, the um, salt around the edge is like a smoky salt. Yeah. Mmm. I like that. That's nice. Out of five? Five out of five. It's a really wow. good cocktail. Top review. Now it's Simon's turn for his cocktail review. So, and what have you gone for, Si? I wanted a mojito, but they don't serve them here because it's a very limited range of spirits, mainly tequila-based cocktails here. So he's offered me this thing called a Maltese donkey, which has got ginger beer in it and mint and other stuff in it, as well as tequila. Right. So, and taste it and find out. Here we go. Oh, that's weird. Oh, a nice weird? Yeah, it is quite a nice weird. I can see why he offered it as an alternative mojito, because it's got that mint, refreshing sort of aftertaste. But the initial sourness that you get on the hito is replaced with something completely weird and different. Uh, it's quite fruity. Um, okay. So, yeah, and interesting. Not much ginger in that, though. So, um, I, was right. quite surprised. I thought it was going to be more gingery and spicy. But What would you give it out of five? I'd probably give it a, a solid four. Right, that's good. <laughs> and then disaster struck. Or should I say, burp who struck. Okay, what's the drama? <laughs> Sorry, keep that out, please. Um, I've just been sitting here and Bird has just pooed on my head. Pooed on your head? Yeah, I thought, what the hell's that? And then, oh my goodness, there is a bird poo on the floor and a little bit of my hair. Oh, there is a bit of muck on the floor. So, look at your head. 
Uh, oh yeah, there is a tiny bit of muck in your hair as well. <laughs> oh well, you'll have a nice shower tonight. It's supposed oh. to be lucky, you know. Yeah, it's not very lucky. You're in Malta, you're very lucky. <laughs> Alright, okay, drama for the evening. So this is supposed to be lucky, right? We headed for the bus station. So we're having a call this an early night because somebody's got poo in their hair. Okay, but the uh, the bad luck is continuing because the buses don't seem to be running back to Salima or Zira. Uh, and they're going to drop us somewhere short, so we're not sure how far short. Um, we might end up having to walk it or get an Uber. Not a drama, but somebody does need a shower because she's covered in bird poo. <laughs> And the buses again were very, very busy. So the bus has dropped us just outside Zira. And we got a bit of a walk, probably about 15, 20 minute walk up to the hotel. This is fine, we need a shower. We've been up since half past one this morning, so, but we're also seeing some pretty funky venues. Look at this place here, Jungle Joy. That seems buzzing. There's a guy break dancing out here just a minute ago. Quite bizarre. But anyway, we'll have to try it out later in the weekend. Cheers. And we walk back through Zira streets, which seemed just as lively as Valletta, and we soon arrived back at the hotel. Letty cleaned herself up, and we turned in. So we made it back to the hotel, and I think it was a case of bird poo stop play, which was a shame, but Nettie's in the shower now, clearing herself and getting rid of all traces of bird poo. Just one of those things. But we've been up since half past one this morning, and I'm amazing. It's like nearly 10 o'clock now, and we're still going, and but we've had a great evening, an amazing bottle of wine down on the quayside. Valletta's got an amazing vibe, it's just so bustling, so lively, it's got a real vibe. And then of course we had that incredible cocktail before the bird poo struck. Um, but yeah, really good evening, shame about the bus and everything at the end, but hey, it was a nice walk up around the harbour uh, back to the hotel. So we're going to turn in now got a busy day tomorrow we're going to go exploring some of the island and make most of our bus pass that we bought okay tune in tomorrow cheers it had been a long day but we had quickly rediscovered why we were so keen to come back to malta and why wearing a hat is always a good idea if you like what we do and you want to see more of our ventures please like and subscribe cheers it was day two of our weekend break in malta and Sai had hatched a plan to explore some of the islands using the bus pass we'd bought at the airport. Our three target destinations were some ancient temples that Sai had seen on the Netflix show, a boat trip into the Blue Grotto, and Malta's original capital city, Medina. First, we had a problem we needed to solve. Morning. We uh, had a fantastic day yesterday. It's day two of our Malta adventure. And um, we did spend an awful lot of money yesterday. Uh, probably more than we wanted to, so our first port call this morning is a bank so that we can get some more euros. Um, but we're going to have a, a day exploring a bit of the island, making the most of our bus passes, and uh, we're going to try and get to see some of the ancient temples on the south of the island. So, first stop though, bank and then we need to get some refreshments for the day. A lot of places are happy to take card payments in Malta, but if you like to tip or give a gratuity, cash is king. And like idiots, we paid for all yesterday's fun in cash, meaning that we'd nearly run out of euros. But with the strong exchange rate, we had brought some cash sterling with us as an emergency fund. Any luck changing that cash, Si? So we've tried two banks here in Salima, and neither of them are happy to change cash, so we brought some cash sterling with us. And we've not been able to change that here. We've got to go into Valletta and use a Bureau de Charge, so we've been told. So we will go into Valletta first and see if we can get our money changed. Bit weird, but hey. So we boarded the bus to Valletta and now had to plan in time in the city to find a Bureau de Charge. With luck, we found one deep within the city streets and I was at last happy we had enough euros. Okay, Nettie, what's the plan? So we've just been into the spa and got some snacks for the day. Got some water, some chocolate bars and some crisps. And sai has gone and got the money changed at the Bureau de Change. Um, so we're all ready to go. So we were indeed ready to go. And our first test was to find a bus that would take us across the island to see some ancient temples that Sai had been raving about. And after a one hour bus ride on bus route 74, we found ourselves, uh, where is this Sai? 
Okay, so the history buff inside me is just a little bit giddy. We're at Hajahim, at the southern sort of coast of the southwest coast of Malta, and this is one of the oldest known man made buildings in the world, supposedly. It's older than the pyramids, it's older than Stonehenge, it's just probably a little bit older than Scarabray and Orkney, and it's a temple complex, and there's two of them for us to explore and I am proper, proper giddy. We've just been in a visitor center, seen some of the exhibits and finds they found here. Incredible. Wow, looking forward to this. How was the bus journey out here though? That was a bit interesting, wasn't it? Luckily we got a seat, so that was fine. <laughs> we were one of the lucky ones. Yeah, um, it was it was quite a long old hall, wasn't yeah. it? And a lot of people were having to stand most of the way. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's taken about an hour to get out of here from Valletta on the bus. Um, but uh, so thankfully we had a seat. Anyway, join us as we go and explore this kind of ancient wonder. Uh, really, really exciting. The temples at Hajar Chaim and Menaja are thought to be some of the oldest man-made freestanding structures on Earth. Thought to have been built around 3600 BC or earlier, these temples have entrances that align with the spring and autumn equinoxes. Older than Stonehenge and the pyramids, these are vast and complex structures, and exactly how the locals were able to construct such complex buildings with perfectly cut doorways and precision cut roofing slabs, well that's a mystery. And we'd taken in the visitor centre first as we entered and marvelled at some of the exhibits found during excavations. Then we took time to wander around the Hajjaim temple before making the 500 metre walk down the hill towards the Menadra temple. So on the way down, you can't help but notice an island off the coast. So what do we know about this island site? Uh, looking across to the island of Flaffa, there's loads of myths and folklore about the island, including that it was removed as a plug from a sort of sinkhole further down the coast by an angry god who was angry with the local residents. However, it's just a limestone island off the coast of Malta. It is quite carefully aligned with some of the doorways back at the temple back there. So maybe it does have some significance back in Neolithic times, but in more recent times, it was bombed and used as target practice by the British Navy and the British military up until 1970, believe it or not. The Minyadra temple is actually more impressive than the Hajjaim. The detailing and decoration inside are still clearly visible after nearly five millennia and our minds were completely blown away by this place that was included in the Netflix show Ancient Apocalypse. I'm going to have to watch that show again, I think. We wandered back up the hill, and on the way we saw bees hard at work making a nest. Well, they could be wasps. Leave a comment if you know. Spending a fair amount of time in the bright Malta sunshine, we were in need of refreshments. And gelato, of course. Right, we've finished exploring, so we've come to get a gelato. We are well needed because it's very, very hot today. And what's your little saying, Sai? A gelato a day keeps the doctor away. And what flavour have you gone for? Of course, it's lemon. Oh, what a surprise! Lemon sorbet, <laughs> and I've gone for a mixed berry one, I and mean, it's absolutely delicious. Okay, where next? Let's walk down the road, shall we? There are a lot of distractions. Look at these large cactuses you're seeing all around the island. They're absolutely amazing, aren't they? What are you seeing, Nanny? Chickens. Chickens? Yeah, chickens, look. There. Some in there. Well, they're cute, aren't they? Yeah, aren't they? One of them's got trapped down there, I think. Oh, it's not trapped, it'll get out. So after making chirping noises at the local wildfowl, I managed to prize Nettie away, and we headed down the hill towards the Blue Grotto. How's the day going, guys? Well, that was a place, wasn't it? We just left Hajjaqim and uh, it's really mind-blowing 3600 years old that was absolutely gorgeous in there yeah so we've just had a gelato as well just because it's really hot that and, was uh, well needed that <laughs> now we're going to walk down the coast a bit we're following a path down the side of a main road and we're going to see if we can find this blue grotto that everybody raves about i'm looking forward to that hopefully finally i get to take my shoes and socks off and um put my feet in the water that'd be nice let's see how we go yay this was a picturesque, if a bit precarious, 35 minute walk from the temples down the hill to the village where you can take boat trips into the Blue Grotto. Well, this is a bit precarious along here, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Never mind. And we slowly made our way down the hill towards the coast. On arrival, we soon realised this was a really pretty seaside village that is clearly thriving on tourism. It had a good selection of bars and restaurants for a spot of lunch before or after you've explored this area sea caves for which it's become famous for. So how easy is it to get tickets for the Blue Grotto, guys? 
Well, how stunning is this place? We have just bought some tickets to go to the Blue Grotto, so we are so excited for that. We'll let you know how we get on. Yeah, pretty cheap, but only 10 euros each, so it's been about a half hour walk from the Hajahain. Um It's been pretty hot, but lovely views on the way down, isn't it? It's been stunning. Yeah, absolutely great. So we're going to try and do this boat trip now. Looks amazing. So we'll give you an update on the way around. And there was no queue to board our little boat that would take us to explore the sea caves. Life jackets on, we were soon bobbing across the ocean to explore the caves. This was a 30 minute trip that was spectacular and our skipper skillfully navigated us in and out of the caves pointing out the key features. And as well as the caves, the white sandy seabed within them makes the clear waters appear turquoise blue with sunlight glistening off the surface and it's absolutely stunning, wow! The Blue Grotto itself is actually quite a deep cave with an impressive rock arch at its entrance. This was definitely worth 10 euros fare for the trip, a truly wonderful experience. We were ready for a bite to eat and decided to eat in one of the many bars in the village. Cy si had a burger and I had a healthier salad. So how's the burger, Cy? Si? Uh, I've gone for a bacon cheeseburger. Uh, not particularly local cuisine, but let's give it the old taste test, shall we? Oh God. Mm. Is that good? The burger is like, just like minced beef, just nothing else. Ooh. Really good. Oh, the cheese is really tasty. Yeah, thumbs up. That's a, as bacon burgers go, that's a good solid five. Okay, my healthy eating kit was a little offset by my newfound love of Maltese wines. So a rapidly developing new feature of this holiday is local wine review. So Nessie, what have you gone for this time? Right, I thought I'd try the local red wine and I will give it a go. Do you know what it's called? Oh, that's really nice. It's very mellow. Okay. Uh, it's got um, a very smooth taste. And, uh, yeah, that is good. And it was only €2.60. €2.60? €2.60. That's a bargain. Wow. Okay, do we know what it's called or just a, just a local wine in the restaurant? Just a local wine in the restaurant. Well, there you go. Well, so, <laughs> thank you. We're down at the Blue Grotto, so uh, put yourself there and ask for a local red wine. Brilliant. Oh, what's the place called? Alka. Uh, yeah, that's the place, Alka. There you go. All right. Cheers. This was going down too easily, and we could have stayed here all afternoon, but we still had more exploring to do. We found the bus stop and boarded the bus to Medina. We had an amazing afternoon at the Blue Grotto. What a place that was. It's great. I mean, we had a nice bit of lunch, didn't we? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, tried the local wine. Had a that's amazing. Sisk chilled beer with lemon, 4% lager but real lemony flavour, really nice and uh, the spot here went down by the Blue Grotto is absolutely stunning, beautiful views across the sea. So we're back on the bus, uh, it's an empty bus, empty we were the first. bus and air conditioning, so it's great. <laughs> and we're heading up to Medina. Well, see you there. See ya. The buses are frequent and regular in Malta and our 35 minute bus ride to Rabat dropped us close to Medina's main city gate. Welcome to Medina. Yeah, we've had a great ride up from uh, the Blue Grotto. We caught the 201 bus, it took about half an hour, didn't it? Yeah. Lovely ride up the sort of western coast, up past the Dingley Cliffs and various other sort of cities with very opulent churches and stuff and squares with statues. Really, really nice, but looking forward to getting ourselves around Medina, sort of Malta's second city. This was originally the capital, apparently. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, it's a looks, walled city. Looks gorgeous, what we've seen so far. Yeah, right at the outside. Mm. We're outside the main gate at the minute, so we're going to have a mooch around this. Uh, apparently, it's quite small, but very, very beautiful walled city. On arrival, you quickly notice that the local tourist trap in Medina is the horse and carriage rides around the citadel. With the searing heat, we thought this looked a little cruel to the horses, to be honest, so we gave this a miss and opted to wander the sleepy citadel streets on foot. Built on a hilltop, Medina was Malta's original capital city, and in the great siege of Malta in 1565, the then Grand Master of the Knights of St John, a certain John de Valette, well he had to make a decision whether to defend Medina or the fortifications around the Grand Harbour, at what is now called Valletta. He chose the latter, and the rest is, as they say, history. Medina was a delight to explore, 
and the Cathedral of St John is simply breathtaking inside. We spent a couple of hours just mooching around and wandering the maze of streets. There are interesting features everywhere you look. Letty, why are you stopping and photographing everybody's front door? Medina is famous for its knockers. No, not these knockers. The traditional Maltese door knockers. It was actually fascinating to see the variety of door knockers around the city, with each design having a historical significance to the family that owned the property. It was getting late in the day and we wanted to head back to the hotel, so we jumped aboard another bus that said it would take us to Salima. This seemed to be a long trip with the bus going all over the place. Hang on, were we supposed to get off? Oops. So we've had a little bit of an evening drama again. Uh, we got on a bus to get back to Salima and then, like idiots, we didn't watch where the stops were <laughs> and oh, we no. just sat on the bus and we went right past Salima <laughs> and onward up the island. Like complete idiots. Uh, and so we jumped off for about 45 minutes walk away from where we need to be. I don't really want to walk 45 minutes if we can help it. But we're going to try and find another bus back in the right direction. Unless you're up for a big walk, Miss Seat. Oh yeah, whatever. <laughs> so we wandered through the St George's Bay area to find another bus stop that would give us a quick bus back to Salima. St George's seemed to be a very vibrant party area and the streets and beach were filled with revellers enjoying the many bars and clubs. But we had neither the energy nor the aroma that would help us party into the night. So we caught another bus that took us through St Julian's and back to Salima. It was a short walk to the hotel and we felt we deserved a nightcap in the hotel bar. Well, here we are. We made it back. <laughs> well, hey, it's been over 12, 12, 13 hours since we left. Uh, yeah, just, like, just under 13 hours since we left the hotel this morning. What an adventure. What <laughs> we have had Cooks Explore, definitely, definitely isn't it? Definitely Cooks Explore. <laughs> Obviously, a few mishaps on the way. But, I mean, the temples were amazing. The Blue Grotto was absolutely out of this world. Medina was yeah. stunning. And then we wore ourselves out and then dozed off on the bus and missed our bus stop and ended up nearly up at St Paul's. So and and it's, it was getting dark because what's the time now? It's um, it was nearly 8 o'clock, yeah. yeah. The sun <laughs> was setting and we're going, okay. But anyway, no dramas. So then we had about a 25 minute walk back, didn't we? Once yeah, we, well, once we got another bus to yeah. get us back nearer yeah. and then we had a 25 minute walk, just come in here and got a nice local wine, really cheap. 10, ten euros 50, yeah. this is the hotel bar. Yeah, that's and, right. Um, yeah. You know, 10 and euros 50 for decent. a bottle of wine, it's local, decent. Local wine, decent wine. Really tasty. Cheers. Anyway, <laughs> cheers everybody. Cheers, we're gonna enjoy this now. <laughs> we'll catch up with you tomorrow. Some more adventures tomorrow. <laughs> Yay. Stay tuned. This was another great bottle of local wine that didn't break the bank. Afterwards, we retired to bed absolutely knackered, but chuffed to bits with our brilliant day exploring the island. Two pretty exhausting days were about to become three, as the following day we had made plans to explore Gozo and the famous Blue Lagoon. Thanks for watching! Day three of our Malta adventure was going to be another big day out, so what's the plans, guys? Good morning. Good morning. We travelled on Thursday and it's now Saturday and uh, we're knackered. <laughs> yesterday was our day, wasn't it? It was a full-on day yesterday, wasn't it? Amazing though, <laughs> what we saw yesterday, fantastic. Yeah. Today, really late out of bed this morning, but we have got uh, a bit of an exciting adventure today because we're going to Gozo, aren't we? Yeah, I'm so excited. So I'm going to get some snorkelling done, so I'm really looking forward to that. Let's hope so. This trip we've booked via Viator, it supposedly takes us out via the Blue Lagoon, so hopefully we'll get a chance to see, not just see that, but also swim in that. Mm. And then we're on some Tuk Tuk's later on today, so um, hopefully we'll be yeah. an absolute blast. And we're getting a, um, a local meal out as well, aren't we? Supposedly. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. My Atel's promised a lot. Let's see if it delivers. <laughs> we'll see what it is. If it's rabbit stew, I'm not having it. <laughs> Stick with us. <laughs> Cheers. Bye. The excursion to Gozo included collection from our hotel at lunchtime. So we did have time for a lie-in, some late breakfast, and also time to sit up on the rooftop terrace at the hotel and enjoy a drink. And we were accompanied by a particularly thirsty dragonfly who spent a good 10 to 15 minutes trying to drink our drinks through a straw. Our minibus picked us up directly outside the hotel entrance, 
and it was a 75 minute journey across the island all the way to the northern coastline and the ferry port for the Gozo Ferry. However, our tour also included a speedboat ride and we boarded this lightweight craft and soon found ourselves speeding out into the channel and heading to the island of Camino. This was an exhilarating experience and with the wind in our hair, well, Letty's hair to be accurate, we were loving this thrill ride. And Sai really enjoyed holding onto his hat. Losing his hat would have been bad luck, but that didn't happen. But Sai's selfie stick did break mid-trip and it was good luck, I suppose, that the phone didn't end up in the sea. The speedboat first visited the Crystal Lagoon and entered some of the many sea caves on Camino. The waters were indeed crystal clear. Makes sense now, I suppose. And wow, they were beautiful. There were lots of boats visiting Camino during the day and we began to see that this was a very popular trip with tourists. A very, very popular trip. The speedboat whizzed us around into the famous Blue Lagoon and this place was chock-a-block with boats. The lagoon has turquoise blue waters and there is an area netted off to allow swimmers to swim safely and away from the many boats. Our speedboat docked and we all alighted and quickly realised there was absolutely no space for us to swim whatsoever. Well that was a thrill ride coming across from the mainland of Malta to Camino. It was quite good wasn't it? <laughs> yeah it's absolutely amazing. Got some good footage. So we've been to the Crystal Lagoon and we've now ended up at the Blue Lagoon but this place it does really does feel like a tourist trap and uh, it's absolutely round. We've got an hour here, an hour and a quarter. I don't need to swim but like, God knows where we're going to swim. Well, this is where I was going to do my snorkeling but there's no no space at all. Absolutely Not zero space. space of a postage stamp is it really? Absolutely <laughs> nothing whatsoever. No. So. so whether I'll get my snorkeling or not I'm I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's beautiful. You can see why people flocked here. It's gorgeous. You know, the sea is crystal blue. Yes. Uh, I think. <laughs> the entire world here, I think. So, uh, never mind, we're going to have a meet around. We'll make the most of it and explore some of the Camino. Let's be clear this is a visually stunning place, but any visions we had for snorkeling in the beautiful blue waters of the lagoon were quickly disappearing. However, as luck should have it, a short walk around the headland and onto the mouth of the channel to Gozo, well, we did find a spot there where we could swim and snorkel. So we grabbed the opportunity and made the most of the hour and a quarter we had been given to spend here. And Nettie was successful with her snorkel and waterproof iPhone case. Top movie making, Nettie. And glad this wasn't a Jaws remake. The phrase, we're going to have to get a bigger boat, well, that wasn't heard at all, in fact. Well, not until later in the day, but we'll get to that later. Time flew past and we soon found ourselves again speeding across towards Gozo. On arriving we were ushered onto the quayside where we waited approximately 15 minutes before being allocated a driver and tuk-tuk. We counted ourselves lucky to be paired up with a lovely Scottish family who were celebrating their birthdays. Our driver was Stephen. You know Stephen with the red and white tuk-tuk? Well everybody knows Stephen don't they? And we quickly found out that virtually everybody who lives in Gozo actually does. And Stephen soon spirited us into the island of Gozo, keen to show us all the sights. And our first stop was the spectacular Cathedral Dome of St John the Baptist in Shukia. Sadly, and we mean sadly, we couldn't enter as there was a funeral in progress. So pics were taken from outside and Stephen sped us away and out to the viewpoint at the Sanapa Cliffs. This was a short five minute walk from where Stephen had parked the tuk-tuk but was well worth it for the views across these towering cliffs and across to the island of Malta were absolutely stunning. Stephen then took us into the heart of Gozo and to the city of Victoria, the island's capital. We parked up outside the citadel and were given 45 minutes to explore. This was similar to Medina, if a little smaller, but was again a stunning place to mooch and wonder and had another stunning cathedral at its heart. The battlements provided breathtaking views across the island and there were plenty more knockers too. Oi, stop being naughty or else. Have you been a naughty boy, Si? I have, I'm really sorry. Can you let me out, please? No, you're going to stay there for the rest of the holiday. Oh, that's not fair. <laughs> Time to head back to the Tuk Tuk. Oh, hang on, where does this go? It's a sally port from the Citadel and thankfully the public toilets are at the bottom. That's a relief. Literally. Back on the tuk-tuk, Stephen then sped us off to see Gozo's famous salt pans. Carved into the rocky shoreline, local families have been making salt from the sea by evaporation on this shore for hundreds of years. And the salt pans are quite a sight and expand all along this northeastern shore of the island. Stephen decided we all needed pictures with his beautiful tuk-tuk. It was pretty cool to be honest. Then some urgency in Stephen's voice. Quick, 
Quick, get back on board! And before we knew it, we were rally crossing across the island, taking back roads and shortcuts. But what's the hurry, Stephen? Ah, we get it now. Stephen had safely delivered us to one of Gozo's most beautiful spots to see the most wonderful sunset, and it was absolutely gorgeous. What a spot he'd found in Zlendi, and Stephen was proving to be the best tour guide we could have hoped for. We spent time here watching the sun sink over the horizon, and as dusk began, Stephen ushered us back aboard the Tuk Tuk, and we travelled in the twilight to a restaurant where we were served a traditional Maltese meal washed down with a local wine. This was a tasty three-course meal with a set menu that comprised of bread, olives and cheese for starters, a pasta-based main course and a cookie for dessert, all very tasty. Stephen then announced that in order to get back to Malta, we were going to have to get a bigger boat. For safety, of course, in the darkness, and our return crossing to Malta would be aboard the Gozo Malta ferry and not the speedboat. And on the way back to the ferry, Stephen stopped and parked at the gorgeous Gansilium church, which was spectacularly lit up in the darkness. And this area was peaceful and a perfect spot to reflect on our day here in Gozo. Stephen dropped us at the ferry terminal and handed us all tickets for the crossing. The ferry crossing is only about 30 minutes and on board we enjoyed a hot chocolate Back in Malta, our minibus was waiting to collect us and an hour and a quarter later we were dropped off outside our hotel. It was late and past 10.30 in the evening, but this had been another incredible adventure. Whilst the Blue Lagoon wasn't the experience we'd wanted it to be, the rest of the trip had been such fun and the experience in Gozo had been absolutely brilliant. Thank you Stephen with the red and white tuk tuk. And we had one final day here in wonderful Malta and we had some unfinished aquatic business that needed to be done. Thanks for watching. Subscribing to our channel is the easiest way to help us make more content like this, and it really means a lot too. And if you've got anything to say about this video, why not drop us a comment in the box below? We always reply. Thanks very much. Day four was our final day for exploring, and it started with another tech failure, when we realized that one of our microphones had also broken the day before, and that a lot of our footage to camera was just silent. Ah oh well, back to the old fashioned way of making these videos. We started the day with a hearty breakfast at the hotel before grabbing the bus into Valletta. More exploring and despite having been here loads of times, it's amazing that you still find the need to buy even more souvenirs. A Malta souvenir shop will surely soon be opening in Northamptonshire in the UK I reckon soon. Mm. We headed for the ferry to the three cities of Singlea, Vittoriosa and Conspicua. This was a short 10 minute ferry across the Grand Harbour and takes you past the pretty marina full of super yachts of the super rich. Well, we've come over to the three cities and it looks like this is where the rich and famous come because look at all these lovely yachts, absolutely gorgeous. We decided to explore the Singlair Peninsula and its quayside areas which are lined with wonderful bars and restaurants that are difficult to walk past to be honest. We found the Mermaid Cave which is a Catholic shrine but also has a legend associated with it of a mermaid who fell in love with a local fisherman and turned to stone when they had their first kiss. We also climbed into the battlements and explored the gardens overlooking the harbour, a very pretty spot if a tad noisy. What is it that's making this noise? So we soon found the culprit and this fella was making a right racket. Time was flying past and it was already approaching lunch. There was something we wanted to do back in Salima before we said goodbye to Malta. So we grabbed a gelato and were taking the ferry back across the harbour. Si, what have you got there? It's my daily gelato, just for health benefits of course. But a shock horror, not lemon today. Guess what I'm going for? What have you gone for? Cookies, yeah. <laughs> Is it good? Oh, it is. We climbed up through Valletta's pretty streets once again and then made our way back to the bus station. We took the bus out to Zira and got off short of the hotel as Nettie had an important taste test that she needed to make. Ever since we had a KFC in the Caribbean that tasted just like what we used to get in the UK in the 80s, Nettie has been on a mission to sample and taste KFCs around the world with the UK's current offering coming out of the bottom of the league table. So Nettie, over to you. Right, I've got, gone for the three pieces and fries with a cis lager and a chilli dip. Um, right, let's try the chicken. Mmm. Mmm. Nice. Is it like you remember it from yesterday, back in the day? It's better than what we do now, but 
it's not as good as the Caribbean one. Okay. Let's try the fries. The fries are better. They're not got their, their proper fries, not the chips that we do back at home. Fries are good. Mm. Um, four. Okay. Four out of five. Yeah. And that important thing that we wanted to do in the Salima wasn't the KFC. We got changed into our cozies and walked up to the Salima bar. The seas were a bit rough, but that won't stop the Cook's Explore official mermaid. Give a girl a snorkel. Okay, I'll have a go too then. And yes, it was fun. This was a brilliant and superb way to finish our Malta adventures. So it wasn't quite over. Those pastries look yummy. Oh, go on then. Shall we do one last night on the town? Sounds like a plan. All right, Nettie, where are we heading to? So, Nettie, it's our last night. Where are we going? We're going to Jungle Joy. And so this final night had got off to a great start and the cocktails were tasty and a little on the strong side too. And once we had experienced the joy of the jungle, we found another great bar, which was lively with pulsating house music playing out. Another great bottle of Maltese wine sunk and we got the munchies. So we scoffed a rather tasty waffle and ice cream with white chocolate sauce. Mm, yum, 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 yum. And the wine, beer and cocktails kept flowing, even back at the hotel bar. A fitting finish for a brilliant weekend break in Malta. And the following morning we were packed and collected from our hotel and dropped off at the airport. And our experience at the airport was a good one this time and we were soon flying back to the cold and rainy UK. Our aim was to explore more of Malta on this trip. Our experience of Malta on the cruise ships had been a good one, but on this trip we discovered there is so much more to do and see in these islands and we felt that this had really been a trip worth making. So had we done Malta after this? Well, we gave it a good go, but everywhere we went we saw something else that we didn't have time to do. So a return adventure is definitely a possibility. Thank you Malta, you are a beautiful and friendly country and just perfect for us cooks to explore. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.